We do what we have to do. That's what you told in a press conference last week, right after announcing another huge uh, rate uh, jump. How much farther can it go? We're currently dealing with an inflation that is way too high. This is particularly the case in, in Latvia, but this is the case throughout the euro area. Uh, the latest reading were north of 10%, and in your country it's north of 20%. So we have to take action in order to deliver on our objective, which is to return inflation to target in the medium term, and that is 2%. So what we have done uh, for the third time now is that we have hiked interest rates and we have made progress, but there is still a way to go. Because to reach our target of 2%, we need to find the interest rate that will actually deliver that medium-term 2% target. So there is still a way to go. A way to go, I understand you want to tell specific numbers, but still, uh, hypothetically, is there a point where you just draw a line? No matter what inflation is there, you just won't go higher than that, or sky is the limit in this? The, the rate that we want and the rate that will be um, efficient and proportional is the one that will deliver for us inflation at 2% in the medium term. Now, you'll tell me, how do you know that? Well, we will use various uh, criteria and indicators. We will first of all, of course, look at the inflation outlook, look at the economy and the economy outlook, number one. Number two, we will look at the measures that we have already taken. And number three, we will look at the time lag between measures that we take and the results that we expect. But we still have a quite a way to go. But so there's no ceiling? If it's needed, then it's, it's needed? We will do whatever it is needed uh, in order to reach this target. And we will use all instruments. Interest rate is one, but there are other instruments, including uh, reducing our balance sheet, which is something that we will debate at our next December meeting. Uh, December meeting, this is the one where it could be another raise this year, the last this year? December meeting is the last meeting of monetary policy for the governing council, so there may very well be another uh, interest rate hike. Yes, this is something that I have announced at our last press conference. Yeah. There has been a serious public debate about the efficiency of the current uh, policy, since we know that the source of inflation this time, it's not people or countries spending too much, which can of course be stopped this way. Mm -hmm. It's uh, Russia's war, which has pushed up uh, the energy prices, which uh, therefore push up uh, everything else. And there is doubt whether this can be stopped the same way too. Are you sure about this? I am certain that we have a mandate to deliver upon. I'm sure that we have to restore price stability. And while it is not the measures that we are taking and that we will continue to take are not going to instantly reduce the price of petrol at the pump, uh, are not going to instantly uh, eliminate uh, the supply chain bottlenecks. But what they will do is, number one, remove all the accommodative policies that is still in place, that is still stimulating in, um, demand. And importantly, we will also make sure that inflation expectations remain anchored. And we want to avoid the risk that they become de-anchored. To do that, we need to increase rates and use all the tools uh, when necessary, including, as I said, reducing the size of our balance sheet. So without, we, we are not sure how mm, fast it will be better, but without this, it would be even worse. That's kind of what you're Oh, saying. if we didn't do what we are doing? Yes, it would be a lot worse because inflation would be, would be fueled, let loose, and would increase and would make people more miserable and the most vulnerable people even more so than the rest of them. About uh, most vulnerable people, when Central May, uh, Bank is making those decisions, do you take in account that they will hit some countries uh, harder than others? You mentioned that inflation in uh, Europe altogether, it's about 10%. Mm -hmm. Here in Baltics, it's about 20, 24, I guess, in Estonia. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, these are the countries where income is lower already. Mm -hmm. And a uh, huge part of it goes for electricity, food, and stuff like that. I yeah. know the mortgage will jump up as well. It's a big hit for them. Did you like, consider it when we, making We those? do. Well, first of all, you know, we have a mandate. But behind a mandate are the people of Europe. And we deliver on our mandate for the people of Europe, all of them the euro area, the 19 member states, soon to be 20. So they are always uh, the concern that we have at the end of the day because price stability is precisely there to secure an environment where uh, jobs are created, where investments are made, when the economy is predictable. And, uh, and we do that thinking of all of them, those who have high inflation, those who have slightly lower inflation, but inflation everywhere is way too high. So there's no question in my mind that we just have to fight that inflation. Uh, much higher rates, of course, affect not only individual uh, people, but also countries who have borrowed a lot, borrowed a lot during the COVID crisis, and now they will have to pay more for those debts. Do you see any risks for those countries with really big debt to GDP, like Greece or Italy? Well, the, uh, you know, the yields uh, are increasing across the board and are affecting all member states. So monetary policy has to do what monetary policy has to do. Equally, governments have to take the measures that are necessary in order to protect the most vulnerable population, but also with a view to maintaining uh, debt sustainability and in the medium to long term reducing debt to GDP. Do you see governments successfully doing that? I think that you know, what has happened in, in the UK a few um, weeks ago has been a serious signal that uh, expenditure without appropriate revenue uh, is not exactly a recipe for financial stability. Okay, so we know one example which we, which we don't want to repeat. What should government uh, do? Do you suggest any government long -term tools? Government, you know, this has been repeated over and over and I'm going to repeat it myself. Uh, governments have to use their fiscal space to provide temporary, targeted and tailored measures in order to help the most exposed and vulnerable people and uh, companies in their uh, societies go through these very difficult times. But it has to be temporary so that once the situation is restored, uh, then it can be removed. It has to be targeted to the most vulnerable people and not across the board and it has to be tailored in order to maintain an incentive for people to save on energy and to be very attentive to price signals. But uh, seeing like this really huge jump of energy and all other prices, don't you think that uh, helping only the poorest, we risk uh, pushing the middle layer to the edge of being poor as well? This is a matter that must be addressed by the fiscal authorities. Uh, our government, for example, has actually found that it's hard for them to make this help as uh, targeted as we would like, as you would suggest, mm -hmm. since it's discovered that we just don't know enough about our households, about their joint income. Mm -hmm. Do you see this a lot or it's just us? No, I think that the, the difficulty to, to tailor uh, and to design in a targeted way the support packages is experienced by pretty much all countries. Uh, this is not specific to the Baltics, this is not specific to Latvia. I think many, many countries have the same issue. And uh, we, we need collectively to find the ways to cross uh, databases to determine from both a tax, social security benefits point of view, who are those that are most in need and, and to target the support to those. Here in Latvia, the last day of its term, our last uh, government, uh, not but parliament, just raised the minimum wage from 500 to 620 starting next year. What's your opinion on a decision like that in times like so this? So it's a 20% increase. Well, when you have an inflation that of which the last reading is more than, more than 20%, it's not surprising that uh, employees at the minimum pay level expect some catch-up um, mechanism in order to uh, cover for their, uh, for their expenses. And I'm not surprised that this is the kind of agreement that is reached. Um, Our hope, because we are monitoring that extremely carefully, is that it is not so broad-based uh, that it then fuels 
uh, second round effect, you know, higher salaries, fueling higher prices and so on and so forth. That's what we want to avoid. But do you see real risks of that actually happening since we know that companies have like huge expenses of themselves already and they just don't have it, enough money to raise wages? Well, I, I don't think you can generalize that that comment. There are companies that are uh, generating significant margins as well. Uh, I think that the the reforms that are being proposed by the Commission as part of the uh, the, the, the plan against uh, the current energy crisis is a good example of that, where the windfall profit are being um, you know reallocated in order to uh, to help the most exposed uh, in our societies. But you know, when you look at the, uh, the the margin of companies over the course of the last couple of years, uh, it, it 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 has it has been generally maintained. Uh, you mentioned a few things which uh, you would say governments should do. There have been the opposite, some uh, comments from governments uh, regarding the central bank. Italy and its new prime minister, Giorgio Meloni, one of the West leaders who have openly criticized the uh, current policy of European Central Bank. And uh, she's not the only one. There is France, Emmanuel Macron. And uh, his concerns are that uh, this way we can slow down not only inflation, but uh, economy, economy itself as well. About recession, do you see it uh, as a possible side effect of this? I see one very clear objective that we have, which is set uh, for the central bank and for all the national central bank in the euro system, which is price stability. Price stability has been defined as 2% inflation symmetric medium term. We just have to deliver on that goal. No matter what. And, and, and by doing so, we will procure the conditions of stability and predictability that will in turn uh, help with, with growth, with investment and with a, a more uh, prosperous economy. The opposite would be a lot worse, let's face it. But the we need to think in terms of counterfactuals. What if we did not fight inflation? What if we did not have the determination to do so? Then we would be gradually slipping into this universe of longer term, high inflation that becomes embedded in the system. We've been there, we don't want to go there. Yeah, I guess this kind of thinking is a bit harder for politicians which are asked well, for immediate difficult. results. It's difficult to explain counterfactual and it, what makes it more difficult, you're right, is that monetary policy operates with time lag. So what we decide now is going to have a, a, a visible uh, effect in a few months time. Uh, in you know, full effect will be in probably 18 months. Now that's a long time by politician timetable. They might have elections in the meantime, yeah. but we have we have a job to do and we will do it. But the evidence of uh, recession coming has slow, slowed down the original plan of uh, how much would the European Central Bank uh, raise those rates? Or no, I think stick to the plan. Our, our determination is undeterred. We have to deliver on this price stability objective that we have, and we have to take all the steps at the right pace, given the situation, and given the three indicators that I have mentioned earlier, and we will do that. You mentioned it could be 18 months till it gets better. It's been really a long time, I would say, since politicians all around talked about surviving winter, using this exact phrase. Mm -hmm. How harsh will be it this year in Europe? It will depend on the climate, number one. We have seen a month of October which was surprisingly mild and which has helped all of us around the Euro area fill up uh, the tanks and the reserves, which are now north of 90%, which is good because it will be helpful to have 90% reserves of gas in order to go through the, the winter. Uh, there is a plan that is being uh, drafted and prepared that will be submitted to the European Council by the Commission that will tackle, I hope, the savings that we have to uh, each of us uh, experiment, the reform of the electricity market, which I hope we will see, uh, the solidarity between the member states where those who have gas and too much of it can share with those who don't have enough, those who have too much electricity can share with those who uh, do not have enough, and that that will help us go through the winter. Um, that's that's my, my expectations for this year. Next year is going to be another story because the reserves might not be as high as they have been. And in the meantime, the substitution that we observe at the moment will have its cost. 
and we will have to face it. And of course, we understand that in long term, in order to be uh, to stop something like this from happening, we have to be uh, energetically independent, which means we have to replace the old infrastructure so that we can switch from gas to other resources. We want people to invest money in solar panels, and in order to do that, they have to borrow money, which will be no more expensive. Aren't we kind of stopping people from these kind of important spendings as well? Yeah. Well, don't heads. forget that the, the energy transition is something that the Europeans have planned now for about two years. It's next generation EU, it's nearly 800 billion euros that are allocated to transition to a, a, a different policy mix which will give us more independence and it's about digital transition as well, but the two are going to move forward together. That transition is going to be a mixture of public spending and, and funding it's also going to require private funding uh, from the corporate and from the households. Yes, of course. And the question is, will they have money enough left for this? And they, will, they, will they be ready to well, borrow? I'm sure, I'm sure that those investments will be encouraged. Yeah, it should be, definitely. When could we return to normal in, uh, situation, to normal inflation um, rates decreasing, hopefully? Well, we have a medium-term horizon which is to return to 2% and we will get back to that. Is that going to stop the war? Probably not. Is that going to uh, you know, bring the price of energy down? Probably not. But inflation will return to 2% uh, in the medium term. That we are committed to deliver. That's our job. It is possible while Russia's war is still going on. It's possible well that. You know, if you had asked me a year ago, is it possible that we have a war in the middle of Europe? I would have said, no, of course not. So I wish I had a crystal ball. I wish I could be a peacemaker and I could engineer a peace settlement. But that is part of the uncertainty within which we have to operate with determination and in solidarity with each other and in support of those who fight for their freedom. Thank you, Madame Lagarde, for this conversation. Thank you. Thank you.